Hi, welcome to the part 10 of this video series. In this part, we will look at questions 56 onwards. For questions 1 to 55, please refer parts 1 to 9 of this video series. Please remember, these are all real exam questions. The chances of same or similar questions coming in the exam is very high. Please subscribe to my channel and please focus on the concepts explained for each and every option. The key is to identify the right option and remove the wrong options. Let's see question number 56. So this is a question. You may pause this video here to read it carefully. So we have a three tire application. This is the web tire. This is the middle tire and this is the database tire. The database tire is on DynamoDB. The web tire has multiple EC2 instances and the middle tire has three EC2 instances. In between there is SQS queue. So basically, if the web tire, the request comes in, it goes via the SQS to these th three AC2 instances and that's how the isolation is maintained. What do you mean by isolation? Suppose you don't have the SQS, what will happen is if there is, there are two requests here, all two requests will go to AC2 instances. Now these two requests, if they become 200 requests, all 200 requests from the web tire will go to the AC2 instances here in the middle tire. And suppose this middle tire can only handle 50 requests, so the remaining requests will time out. Okay, they will wait in the queue for some time and maybe after that it will time out and very few requests will go to the DynamoDB databases. In order to avoid that scenario, we put a SQS in between so that SQS can hold these requests in the queue. So if this middle tier is processing 50 requests in one time, so the remaining 150 requests will be in the SQS queue. And as in one, using the FIFO logic, first in, first out. So if, if uh, 1 to 50 is getting processed and if, if two are done, so, uh, two more will, will be taken from this SQS queue and this is how the processing will go on. So, no data will be lost in between. All the requests will be catered, no data will be lost. Everything will be sent to DynamoDB and back to the user. So, here what the question is saying, the pain point is that at peak times when the load is very high, for example, the customers who submit the orders have to wait much longer, that is one. And then as a solution architect, you have been asked to reduce these processing times. So during peak time, there are a lot of orders coming in. Suppose this is Amazon.com. During peak time, there are a lot of, a lot of orders coming in. So the web tier receives a lot of uh, requests. All of these requests goes to SQS. Via SQS, it will go to the three EC2 instances and to DynamoDB. So this is taking a lot of time to process. So what may be the reason? So the first reason may be, you see, the reason cannot be DynamoDB here because, you know, the request, all the requests are, are collected here and then based on this capacity is being set. So suppose if I, like I told in an example that this may have a capacity of 50 uh, requests to be processed. So if there are 200 requests coming, then remaining 150 will be in the SQS queue. But what if I increase this capacity, I put this on auto scaling, instead of 3, it can spawn 30. Then immediately I can process all the requests so in this SQS queue and uh, that, that way uh, the bottleneck will not be there. But let's look at the option. The first option says, so you have to use Kinesis Data Firehose. So yes, they are saying is this SQS, you remove this and replace with the Kinesis data firehose, but they will do similar functionalities. There will not be much of a difference here. It will still maintain a queue. So what's the advantage? So A is wrong. So B says you, you're going to use Elastic Cache, Redis. So this is the DynamoDB database. On top of it, you use Elastic Cache, so that some caching will be there. But this problem is not because of caching. The problem is because the queue is accumulating here and this guy is not processing all the requests properly in time. Hence, option B will not work. So option C says you plug crowd, uh, cloud frontier web tire, so that some caching is there. But the problem is not in this tire. No? The problem is in this tire. So how will that help? C is wrong. So this is the only option left and this should be correct. So what it says is we put EC2 auto scaling to scale the middle tire instances based on SQS queue depth. What is SQS queue depth means if SQS has like 2000, uh, 2000, uh, 2000 uh, requests in the queue, so that is their depth, 2000 is the depth. If it has 500 requests in the queue, the depth is 500. So what it says is you put this guy, this guy here, is here an auto scaling group so that if there are 200 requests, this guy will auto spawn and process the request. If there are 2000, this guy can spawn more EC2 instances and process the request. So, this is the right option. Let's move forward. 
let's process question number 57 so this is uh, the question you can pause the video here to read it carefully so there is a web, uh, web application so what it's doing is it is based on ec2 instances and it is behind a load balancer elastic load balancer so what is it processing historically weather data and it is generating reports which can take five minutes to run so you suppose there are 10 users there are uh, for the first user itself it is taking five minutes each time so 10 minutes the remaining users on the connections they are they are getting unresponsive like that they are not getting any reports so the system is unresponsive to those users so what should we do to increase the responsiveness so like we saw in the previous question the problem is the bottleneck what is the bottleneck happening <coughs> on ec2 instances when it is trying to process so what will you do is uh, if you see these options the first option option a this looks correct because what it is telling is you use sqs so when the moment you use sqs you are collecting the uh, request in the queue so that way you know nothing uh, the, the long running uh, queries will not be there and you use aws lambda so whenever the requests are coming you can use as many instances of aws lambda which is a serverless architecture to generate the reports so that way the uh, users, some of the users who are getting no response that problem will be eliminated so a looks correct let's see b so what it is saying is this load balancer no, the alb you increase the timeout to five minutes that means after five minutes you will get a timeout which is anyways happening no because uh, the reports are taking five minutes to run and the other requests in the queue are getting uh, unresponsive so uh, setting this to five minutes will not help and anyways uh, this will never the idle timeout will never help because uh, the, the problem is not at the load balancer so b is wrong see what does load balancer do it what it is doing is load balancer has some instances uh, behind it so if there are three instances behind it and if you are putting a timeout idle timeout so that means that if uh, the one instance is not available it will time out in five minutes okay but uh, alb is very smart it will try to divert the request to various ec2 instances and here the problem is not that the problem is not with ec2 instances and diverting it with that the problem is that uh, you know you have to collect this in the queue and process it so that nothing gets lost and there is no unresponsive uh, request to the users so b is wrong definitely now it is saying that in the client side application code so the website that you have created it is having some application code so you increase that request timeout to five minutes again this will not help because uh, what you are trying to do here is uh, the reports are already taking five minutes and if you are uh, taking your client side application code to increase the timeout it will not help here now the last option here it says is you, uh, you publish the report to s3 and then use uh, cloudfront for downloading to the user so what will happen is if you are already publishing the report to s3 suppose uh, if there is a report at every day at six o'clock you refresh the report and put it on s3 so any users that are coming it they will be always uh, routed to s3 and they will download the report from there and cloudfront will help you with caching because it's the same report which is kept there it will help you with caching okay this is this is also one of the ways to do it uh, it is not a bad way but uh, a is better than this because uh, what will a do is um it it will uh, you know it will not allow you uh, allow the timeout to happen even if you publish reports to s3 uh, so here uh, every day some some process will be required to publish the report to s3 okay and then on s3 all the users on s3 uh, will hit s3 uh, in order to reduce that load you will put a cloud front so that some caching is required and since it is historical weather data the data is not changing every day is a historical weather data so this can also work but a is a better option than this because a will hit directly and it will uh, extract fresh data whatever is there in the database so a is the right answer so let's see question number 58 so this is a question you can pause the video here to read it carefully so here is a question you have an application on ec2 instances and it also writes sensitive information to s3 buckets okay. so now the question says is you have to make this secure the s3 bucket no? so that nobody can from the internet can access it so here the pain point is you should prevent it from an internet access there are five options out of which you have to choose two answers the first is create a vpc endpoint for s3 so this option looks correct because you know if you want to protect it you create an endpoint and then 
I mean, it's all about VPC. Okay, so if you have to do it, you VPC, it works with the endpoint first thing. Now, now with the endpoint, what you do is you should also apply a bucket policy to restrict access through the S3 endpoint only. That's why A and C looks correct. So you can check this documentation. You can use S3 bucket policies to control access to buckets from specific VPC endpoints. So this is what our answers our question. But how are we so sure? Why the enable server access logging on the bucket will not work, the green one. It will not work because it, it is only used to understand the logs, what is happening, what has happened the events. It will not prevent it. After uh, accessing, it will tell you, so after the hack happens, so it will tell you this guy came hacked and this guy took this information. That's the log. There is of no use. You want to prevent that hack to happen. You want to prevent internet from accessing it. So this will not prevent it. This is a post. Uh, it's kind of a post-mortem. Death has already happened. It will tell you how that death happened. That's all. So B is wrong. See ACL is access control list. It's used because you know. Suppose you have a folder and you want only three users like John, Tom, Jack. You want to give them access. So that you use ACL for that. Here ACL will. How will you know? Like you, you cannot know beforehand. There are only three people need access. Maybe sometimes it is five people. Maybe ten times uh, ten people. So you don't know that. So you cannot use ACLS yes, because uh, what you want to do is you have to block that internet access. So only from S3 endpoint only that access should be allowed. Uh, so so D is wrong. See, it is telling you to use IAM policy again. That's the same thing. Though. You use ACL or IAM policy, the same thing. Uh, you don't. Uh, I mean, you are using a these policies, but you know it. It is still not a, a proper foolproof mechanism for this. Um, so this question cannot be answered via ACL IAM policy access. You don't know the initial set number of users, and uh, you want to protect it from internet. So whenever you want to protect it from internet, no thumb rule, thumb rule, thumb rule. I'll tell you, protect it from the internet always means through endpoint. In terms of cloud, uh, you always remember. Expose your endpoints and control it through endpoints only. This is how you protect it from internet access in a VPC. So these two are the right answers. We'll move forward. So let's see question number 59. I hope I'm able to communicate the concepts. So let's see question number 59. I hope I'm able to communicate the concepts clearly. See here a company uses S3 as its object storage solution. So I would request you to pause and read this question. Let's mark the keywords first. You identify your keywords and then I'll mark my keywords. See, it's a simple question. There are a lot of S3 buckets. Some are accessed frequently, some are accessed non frequently. The keyword is life cycle policies are not consistently implemented. That's the only thing. And due to which, what will happen is the storage cost has increased because life cycle policy is not implemented. Uh, in some cases, you're telling after 30 days you move to the cold storage, and some cases you're saying after 60 days you move. So that is not consistent. You are ending up paying more money. So as a client, you want to reduce that cost. How how will you do that? So let's see the options. Option A. So it says to use S3 ACL. That is the access control list. How, so how will it solve it? It will not solve it because your your data is already there in the hot suppose in the hot tire. It is already there. And you are supposed to put it in the in the deep archive. It didn't go through. And just by giving ACL access, how will it get resolved? It will not help with the storage cost. It will only help you access. Suppose instead of five people, now you add five more people in the list. Uh, how does it matter? It doesn't help you with the storage. So A is totally wrong, right? nuisance, useless option. Now B is also another useless option. Uh, they are selling to use EBS. So EBS in EC2 instance. No? Elastic block store is a uh, storage for EC2 instances. Now here we are talking about S3. So I don't want to delve into depth of here. How to link it? There is no link between S3 and EBS. There are two separate entities. This is again another useless option. Just throw it in the bucket. A waste of time. Now C looks correct. Intelligent tiring option because what you will do is you don't want to apply your brains here because it really uh, this question. If you go to a client and this is the problem, it really means that the client has implemented uh, S3 lifecycle policy in a very bad manner. Okay, that is, uh, I mean, that is, that is uh, probably that sounds rude, but that is the most polite statement I have made. If the client has implemented in a very bad manner. Now we want to fix it. There are two ways of fixing it. Uh, go and uh, clear the garbage yourself with your hand. The other way is use intelligent tiring. 
in individual tearing what happens is it is a bit costlier but this guy is having ai built in it is smart enough it will automatically do the intelligent tearing it will automatically check which ones are accessed frequently which ones are not accessed frequently accordingly take a decision which one should go to a hot tire cold tire archive deep archive and so on so uh, what this is the fastest option to do it probably a bit expensive but the fastest option okay and it uh, it will lower your cost storage cost because this might uh, attract some cost but it will reduce your storage cost in the long term and that, that is how you gain uh, money and that is how you will lower the cost of storage and you will not even compromise the availability of objects all objects will be available there is no issue with that okay so c looks correct but let's look at option d also otherwise d will feel bad use s3 one zone infrequent access so what will one zone do is it is uh, it is the cheapest option so one zone means uh, you are you are compromising the availability of objects suppose because it is only on a single availability zone but that data center or that az goes down your entire data is lost okay and uh, as an architect you should never make such mistakes when the question is clearly saying you should not compromise availability of objects with d you are compromising the availability of objects why how because you are putting it on one data center or one az it goes down everything goes down first thing okay but does a one zone help in reducing the cost yes but uh, why will you put everything in one zone because uh, in there, there must be some th some data sets or some files which are good for hot tire some good for cold tire some good for deep archive some good for archive etc so why you will club everything and put in uh, one zone Th this is again not a good practice so d is wrong so we will log this answer and move forward so this is the last question for this video question number 60 Please pause this video to read it carefully. This requires some sort of understanding. So in the exam also, you will have to read it carefully, okay? In the exam, use whiteboard. On the top hand side in the center, there will be a whiteboard. Just click that, a whiteboard will come. And if you want to note some points or draw a diagram reading the question, you can do it in parallel. That's the best practice. That way you can answer the question properly. Now you pause this video and mark the keywords. I'll mark my keywords and then see whether both the keywords looks okay or not. So looking at the question, you are seeing a lot of numbers here. 10 terabyte, 300 terabyte, 900 terabyte. This is all crap. Don't focus on this because that is just a distraction for you. Just focus on the orange items. There are three requirements. First, ma for maximum I.O. performance, what should you use here? Maximum I.O. performance, always remember EBS, 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 maximum I.O. performance, EBS gives you. Okay. So here with EBS there are two options A and B. So my uh, I I have eliminated these two. EC two instance store will not give you maximum performance. EBS gives you because uh, if you talk about storage, EBS is the storage of EC two. EC two is not a storage. Okay, and EC two instance store you are talking about it's a temporary storage. It is not used for large large size. Here we are talking large size 10 terabyte, 300 terabyte, 900 terabyte. So EC two instance store you cannot hold that much that's why c and d are totally wrong crap eliminated now a and b so you see this very in just two steps we eliminated c and d now between a and b which one is correct let's move forward so they wanted durable storage so durable storage s3 is the most durable data storage okay efs is not the most durable s3 is the most durable data storage 99.999 percent is something go and read the documentation in aws you can compare the durability of s3 and efs you will see the durability of s3 might be one nine uh, one digit higher or so so s3 is right answer so this way we have eliminated b also and let's look at c uh, sorry, the third one archival media. So archival always you have glacier archives put it on glacier archives glacier archives glacier is the simple thing. So he is right. So this is uh, the the right option. Okay. So please subscribe to my channel and please remember the concept that I am explaining that is the key to answer the questions in the exam. In the exam the chances are that you will get exactly the same question or similar questions. Please focus on the concepts in the exam. You have to keep your head cool. Focus on the concepts so that you can answer through the concepts in the exam. Do not rectify the answers. Do not mug up the answers because if you do that in the exam, it will be a googly for you. Please understand the concepts. So see you in the next part of this video series. We will make some more parts because there are a lot of scenarios and a lot of questions to be covered.